What up, everybody? So let me talk about Live Love ASAP as I always do. I'm always telling you that this is the best thing the new school has ever dropped. And sometimes, obviously, I'm maybe beating a dead horse. But uh, I, I really want to stress that th this album really, or I should say, it may mixtape, but it really was an album. I mean, this shit blew me the fuck away, you know. Um, and I don't think there is a project, actually, the, the, as years go by, I don't think there's a new rap album that even comes close to this shit. I talk about self-titled with Playboy Cardi kind of being my second favorite, um, re you know, release of a new act. But, um, and, and self-titled is very dope. But um, Live Love ASAP is something else. Because Live Love ASAP, how do I say this? It, it was in many ways a return to what I love about rap and, and what I thought was gone from rap completely. That sort of furious sampling uh, aesthetic. And, but they took it in a whole different direction, still made it New York. Um, but it's also, it hit me because it's really the, one of the first times I got to witness greatness, like from the very beginning, you know, like I, I saw Purple Swag when it came out, I saw Peso, the video when it dropped, I heard bass the you know, one or two days, I think they released it officially before the mixtape. So it was like, I was really following it from quote unquote, the beginning. I wasn't on real nigga Tumblr. So for those, they were following probably even before. I was, you know, and I understand that some of the tracks like What's Up and things like that were already sort of floating around there. But ultimately, it's like when you witness some, the birth of something great, um, you know, in real time and you're old enough to appreciate what you're experiencing, uh, it's really something powerful. I was trying to think, like, obviously my favorite rappers of all time, Nas, Hove, Prodigy, Big, Red Man, Missy, Q-Tip. You know, a lot of these people, I didn't witness them as they came out, right? Like, sure, I witnessed them as they were dropping classic songs and albums. Like I've said, you know, I was listening to rap by the time I heard Nas is like drop and I was like, whoa. But my point is that they had already, they were already like an album in, right? By the time I got to them. Right. So an album, maybe an album or two albums in. And that's a different kind of feel. Right. So the people I'm sure that witnessed them when they came out. Again, this is why I think it's interesting when the newer generation are like, oh, you're not really a fan of Nas and all this stuff. And it's like, man, stop it. Like the people that witnessed the birth of Nas, like shout out to my man, K Cut of Main Source. Like he was there. He well, he helped make the beat anyways for the uh, Live of the Barbecue. I think a large professor hooked it up, whatever. But the point is that. He was there. He was he was literally there when Nas spit the first rhyme. Like, they were in the studio, right? Like, you think he doesn't understand Nas? You think he's not going to be a fan of Nas for the rest of his life? Come on, man. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he was right there. <laughs> and he, you know, I've, I've talked to him about this, and he was just like, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Nas wasn't even supposed to be on the song. Like, you know, it was like a last-minute thing, and... <laughs> You know, Joe Fatal brings this guy Nas, and it's like, okay, sure, like you know, let's let's leave, let, you know, put him on the record, sure, why not, right? <laughs> they're just like, what is this shit? So that's what I'm saying. Like, there's something about witnessing greatness in a way before the rest of the world gets latches onto it, and it's it is hype beasty. I mean, that's obviously where the hype beast kind of things come from, but that's not even where I'm coming at it from because I, I don't. I don't subscribe to hype beasts and all that kind of shit. But what I am saying is that there is really something special about witnessing that. I think the closest thing before Rocky, in a sense that I witnessed, was maybe DMX because I remember DMX coming out in real time in terms of, you know, get at me, dog, and then <laughs> the album and the album going nuts. But again, even that, uh, I was in Saudi Arabia. I obviously wasn't close enough, um, so you know, it just I didn't feel what the buzz was like in the street and you know so in a way even that i wasn't like even though when x came out x was like my guy he was literally like my favorite rapper in 98 and even into 99 so but rocky was different you know like when i think about all of my favorite artists and rap i think the only one that is new that i would add on uh, my personal favorite list i'm not saying that rocky's you know your has to be in your top 10 or anything like that but um I would say for definitely my favorites of all the rappers I've ever witnessed, I would say Rocky's absolutely one of my favorites. 
again, simply because of what he did on Live Love ASAP. Not necessarily because I think he's the greatest lyrical guy in the world, but I do think that the way that him and Yams and whoever was involved in that project, the stylistic choices with the beats, the and then and Rocky being smart enough actually and vocally engaging enough uh, because you know it is a skill that he figured out how to even rap and express himself and the emotion that he was able to express himself yeah it's one of my favorite shits i've ever heard so i want to just kind of go through a few of these uh samples because i i love this shit man you know this is beautiful stuff man <laughs> look at that shit that's sampling of that man my old gold grills give her cold chills Says she got a coke feel cause I'm so trail She don't boy scale but I so pale No deal put her on her feet so now If someone asked me, didn't really know much about rap uh, And they were like, oh what is this hip hop thing? I would honestly play that I would play the uh, Ademus, whatever the song is Ademus, and I would play Palace right after. And I would say, this, to me, is the power of hip-hop. At the simplest form. In a way, it's cheat code music. I've said this before. That doesn't make rap cheaper. It makes rap great. But, again, it, rap builds on the foundation of previous music. Without a doubt. Without previous music, there is no hip-hop. Um, but the emotion, the raw emotion of it, and the beauty of Ademus, right? It's, it's, it's something so otherworldly and beautiful. And then Rocky and Clams just come in and ah, and spit and, and let their guts out. You know what I mean? But in a very fly and dreamlike way, that is hip-hop at its freaking core. And this is what makes this shit cool. And again, you've never heard a song like that. I'm sorry, but I haven't... Like, when I heard Palace, I was like, what is this shit? <laughs> I never heard nothing like it. Like, you know what I mean? So, again, this is what I'm talking about. It's raw as hell. It's beautiful as hell. But it's a vibe that, again, like it, the cloud rap, some actual new shit that New School is doing that is actually very, very transcendent and intelligent and emotionally deep. Because I had long thought that the New School was incapable of making anything deep. And Live Love ASAP, you know, lyrically, is not deep at all. But... In terms, well, Demons has a little bit, there's a bit of stuff in there, but emotionally, Live Love ASAP is very deep, right? Especially, of course, the production. The production really uh, gives uh, Rocky an element of depth that I don't think he was able to really capture in any of this stuff going after that, which is unfortunate. Uh, but the, the beats are just so deep, right? And they, they, they just hit on a, on a level that most hip-hop albums, I would argue, don't even come close to. I'm being real. I mean, again, you only really see this kind of shit with like Mob Deep or Wu Tang, and again, it's not surprising that Clams' biggest inspirations are Wu Tang and Mob Deep. I mean, this is literally the manifestation of that stuff again, which is why it was weird to me when people were hating on Rocky but claiming to be Wu Tang fans and Mob Deep fans. I'm like, it's right there. It's in. The, it's in the music. Anyway, beautiful shit. Says she got a coke feel, cause I'm so trill. Just the way he says that shit, the sound's so trill. Like the vocals, man. Quality, you know what I'm saying? The low end, the bass, the heavy bass. Again, that's hip hop. Um, and I have to say, Clams is absolutely, I mean, obviously, I would say a lot of us who are Live Love ASAP fans early probably said this as well, but I always said, like, Clams is the shining torch on Live Love ASAP. Like, I, look, and it's great, actually, Yams and ASAP, it was phenomenal that they had other people other than Clams, because it, had it just been Clams, it would have been one note and boring. Not boring, but you get what I'm saying. It would have been one note, and you don't want to do that. The great rap albums have diversity. Again, follow Illmatic. Primo does most of the beats. The beats Primo does are phenomenal, but you still need Large Pro. You still need that one Pete Rock record. You still need that one LES record, right? So you want to have cohesion and diversity at the same time. That's where you make the real brilliant shit. But I will say that to me, like, all those other beats, phenomenal beats, done by Beautiful Lou, shout out to Beautiful Lou, of course, and ASAP Ty Beats, shout out to him. Uh, SGP also had some... Um, Lyle LaDuff, of course, brand new guy, which we'll get to. Phenomenal beat, one of the best beats I've ever heard in my life. But the point is that Clams 
has five beats, has more beats on this than any other producer. And I think the soul of Live Love ASAP is really at its heart clams, in my honest opinion. Now. This was cool. I like, obviously, Peso's phenomenal. I, I love Peso. Um, <laughs> such a great summer record, man. I be that pretty motherfucker. All is what I'm rapping. Tell my niggas with the bitch and cook up. Cook up. Let's go. <laughs> Oh my god, man. Oh, this shit. Better fucking recognize that fucking name. Uh, ASAP. Recognize, recognize that shit. ASAP. 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 Fuck yourself. Um, I think I've talked a lot about bass. I've said this in my numerous Live Love ASAP discussions and talks. Bass is one of the craziest rap records I've ever heard in my life. And changed my life in, in a way. Because when this came out, I remember being like, what the fuck is this? And I couldn't stop listening to it. Like, in fact, I think it's probably the most addictive song I've ever heard in my life. There was something about it. Again, maybe it was because, again, I had not, I was still listening to rap. I was still paying attention to shit. But it was like the, I was shocked at someone actually doing something unique and surprising me. And being like, and me trying to orient myself and being like, where the fuck am I right now? Like, how is this beat even operating? Like, what's the rhythm here? Like, questions that... I hadn't asked myself in rap in years. And uh, yeah, I loved it. And I was just listening to it all the fucking time. At first, I wasn't even sure if I liked it, but I, it was such an addictive fucking listen that I was like, I kept playing it, kept playing it. Um, and then, of course, when the ASAP uh, Trap Star sessions, I'll see if I can find that actually. Uh, hey, Milano, what up? Um, ASAP Rocky Trap Star Freestyle. I saw this when this dropped. In fact, yeah, this shit. So if you go further down enough, the comments, you know, have been, because this was uploaded 12 years ago. I'm pro like, you won't see my comment anymore because it, YouTube gets weird, but I'm literally, if not the first comment, second or something in this. I remember seeing this when this came out, and this was instrumental to me to even understanding what the fuck bass was about. Because once I saw ASAP actually rocking to it, like... Ace. And that rumbling bass underneath, and you know, uh, my rose gold, purple got me slow mo. Still, I'll tell you the part to me that really hit me. Full fold, this part, you must be loco. Standing on these bricks and calling bricks and calling. And they were like doing this shit, and I was like, okay, that's how you rock. With the handshake. I was like, this nigga is the rawest thing I've seen in decades. <laughs> He's going to take over. He's the one. That's, that's literally, as soon as I see that, I was like, ah, I get it. This dude is the resurrection of this rap shit for real, for real. And obviously, I was disappointed when people were hating. But anyway, let's go back to this. Oh. This was great. Recognize that shit. ASAP. Ace, fuck yourself. You don't put no fucking fear in my heart. Look at that shit. This is beautiful. These are the niggas so so they open up my mojo. Spanish Sophie with a half a kilo of my Jojo. I was like, I can't I cannot stress how weird this beat was because that I was like, what the fuck what kind of beat is this? It was so weird to me. It was like the weirdest choice of a sample. Now, again, I can't stress enough how one of the things that I loved about Clams in particular uh, and his sampling choices was I for, I would say in like maybe a couple of years prior to Live Love Aesop coming out, uh, I started to listen to a little bit of sort of dream pop, which is kind of what Emogen Heap is, all right? Emogen Heap, I don't know how to say her name. But I, again, I've said this in another video with yeah, 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 Skeletons. It was like, there were certain songs where I was just like, no one's sampling this shit. Like, why aren't people sampling this? I feel like these would make some crazy deep beats. And it was like, Clams and Rocky just reached into my head and did that shit. And that's what I fucking, like, that's the shit that really moved me. Because it's like, I felt seen, if that makes sense, you know, in a way. You know, like, and again, like, Rocky... And those choices, Yams, you know, give it up to Yams. But it was like, yo, these dudes are reading my mind. 
from afar. Obviously, it's not, you know, they don't know me, so, like, they're not reading my mind. But you get my point. Um, there, It's just interesting to see, like, someone do something actually unique and powerful and beautiful, right? Um, whereas a lot of people were actually kind of going the mediocre route. So, anyway. <laughs> Down to earth, knacked up nigga, I've been down since birth. Backpack full of random work. Two bad hoes, I can try to jerk. That shit's ridiculous. Okay, brand new guy, obviously one of the greatest rap beats I've ever heard. Straight up, straight up. And again, like that Memphis, that trap, cuncun, that shit. I'd never heard nothing like this because, it, and I've said this before, we were on Lex Luger. Lex Luger's beats were nowhere near this beautiful or even complex or interesting. And then this came out. And I think this changed the fucking game. This is like a pretty flocko before pretty flocko to me, in a sense. Um, but again, I love that they moved into movie scores and they got something theatrical. Again, this is what I loved about Rocky. I'm a film guy, so like, people weren't really doing this, right? <laughs> Put him in the ground, he was down to earth And act up, nigga, I've been down since birth Backpack full of random work Two bad hoes, I can try to jerk You want this shit? Let your key to speak Whole heat, bang is bang Let your key to speak This is another thing that I found really fascinating about Rocky Rocky would take stuff like I don't listen to Lil Wayne, I'm not a fan, never have been um, and that song, uh, John 16 or whatever, I would not even bother. I've heard it and it didn't move me at all. But <laughs> Rocky would take stuff that I would normally consider lame and he would somehow make it cool. I don't know how he does this shit because I've seen him do it. Like to me, he did that actually with kind of like Bone Thugs flow because he was clearly like when you listen to him, you're like, you're hearing Bone Thugs, but it's like way better than they ever did it. Right, that's kind of what I mean. So again, Rocky to me was doing some really innovative shit. Uh, again, him and Yams or whatever, where it was almost like they were like again sampling the variety of everything that's come from rap, the sort of the Midwest flows, the Memphis style dark shit production, the Houston screw shit, you know, like the New Yorkisms, and even like appropriating stuff that I was like, ah, I wouldn't normally touch that, but like you've made that cool. You've actually cleaned up. You've, like, you've listened deep enough to figure out there's something here and clean it up almost, right? And that's kind of what I loved about Rocky. Like, it was just, and he's done this from time to time where I'm like, oh, like, that's a really interesting way of taking a Slim Thug ver or a Slim Thug vocal or something where I'm like, ah, oh, like, in the context, like, of what you're doing, it's ill as fuck. But, like, the song itself, I would never listen to and I don't even care about because I don't think the song is that great. Come on, this smoke, smoke. This is fire. Like, I'm sorry, I grew up on this shit. Okay, I'm a man of a certain age. I grew up on Mortal Kombat, so putting smoke and all that shit, SGP, obviously, um, yeah, Thai beats and them did it. But like, this is again the sampling shit that just had me like off the fucking wall with this shit. Like, this is brilliant. Nobody was doing this. I'm sorry. There is no rapper that you can point to at this time that came out with this just like so this massive variety of style, of music choices and incorporating them into all this massive variety of beats, right? It just it just wasn't happening and it all was cohesive. And it's fire. This is crazy. This is nuts. That's nuts. Again, these guys want some other shit. I saw the fountain in theater, right? So I remember the fountain very much so because obviously it's very, very visually powerful. And I saw it in the theater, like I said. And so for them to make a beat, I never, it never even occurred to me that they would sample the fountain. Like, it's not something that I would, you know, I would ever think of, right? But again, that's what I'm saying. That theatrical shit, this is what made Live Love ASAP so fucking powerful. But also probably why it was very hard for them to clear it. And it probably took them forever. And because I remember at the time, I think they, after it releases a mixtape, there was some interest, I think, um, in releasing it commercially. But then they never did. And I, I, I imagine some of that had to do with sample clearance. But again, this is kind of the issue with rap. When you can't sample, you can't really make great hip-hop. 
you know it's it's like that we again it's cheat code music so we are bound to our samples right so once our samples aren't once they're not going nowhere we're not going nowhere so it is what it is but these you know you have to look at something like live love asap this is like you know it reminds me of those albums of old where like you look at a public enemy it takes nations it takes a million um to hold us back a nation of millions and there were samples throughout everything they had like some songs would have like 10, like 10, 12 samples, one song, right? In those good old days, three feet high and wise in De La Soul, same shit, right? And they were just, you know, you know, like you'd hear telephone, uh, telephone noises and, and skits and random shit that they were just throwing in together. All that stuff's cool as fuck. It shows like a wild, imaginative mind. And obviously those kind of things started to dwindle, like those kind of albums and sampling that furiously, dwindled because people started being sued for samples and i and i understand i'm not against it but um you know you started to get less and less sampling right and that's why in a way when you listen to something like illmatic or live love asap or a de la soul three feet high and rising that is sample heavy you are listening to gourmet shit really like the amount that they've that's like a gourmet meal they've spent the money in you know uh, acquiring the best ingredients and expensive ingredients, whereas like you know, Chief Keef finally rich is just some basic Fruity Loop shit, right? And it's not the same thing. This is why again, when people are like, oh, you know, they compared the two. Not that they would, but like uh, I've seen around that time, they're like, oh, this album you know, by some random rap we don't care about anymore is just as good as Live Love Lace Up. I'm like, no, no, no. Like even the ingredients aren't like on par at all. This is fire. In this fucking SUC, my fucking brain is purple, nigga. Come on, come on. First of all, Purple Swag Chapter 2, I prefer to the original one. The other thing I wanted to say about Purple Swag, and uh, I will eventually do a video analysis, I think, on Purple Swag, but Purple Swag. I wasn't crazy about the song, but there were things in it that I was like, ooh, like, there's something different about this cat. Like, at first, it was like, oh, this is just another kind of person doing, you know, DIY YouTube. It's just another YouTube rapper. But there were things in there where I was like, this is different. This person is going back. It's almost like, again, it was like odd futurish in a sense, where um, they were kind of going back to that DIY raw shit. But I will say right off the bat, the thing that I loved about the purple swag video was I loved the the close up of Yan's face in like and you don't even see his eyes but he's a real nick real bitch he's got the grills in and you see this giant purple birthmark and I remember just thinking who the fuck is this <laughs> and you know and again at first I didn't know it was Yan's I didn't I know he I didn't even know if he was a rapper but I was just remember thinking to myself like this is fucking cool like that this guy had the balls to show his giant birthmark like in a video because again, rap was getting glossy. Rap has had, at this point become very like airbrushed, and it still is in that in the airbrush space, you know, um, where everyone's pretending to be perfect and wealthy and rich and all that shit, and you know, and perfectly beautiful. Whereas, and here you have this guy with a giant fucking birthmark in his face. You know what I mean? And he's just like, yeah, it is what it is, isn't it? <laughs> just thought that shit was hard. You know what I'm saying? Like most people would be self conscious about that kind of shit and showing that, but not Yams. And then, the, and also, I want to say, and the fact that it was like a purplish thing to me was also like wild. Like, who has that on her face? And like, it's almost like having a rose on your face. It was weird, man. But it was again, it's weird and beautiful. And those, and that combination to me is extraordinarily powerful. It's a combination that you you rarely see. But when you mix those two things together, something that's mad weird, but also really gorgeous, like that's to me the most powerful shit on the planet. I said, you know what I mean? Real simple, just real quick. I said, like, I never would never listen to, like, the Mike Jones record. I don't care about Mike Jones. But just the fact that he threw that one little, like, two words in there, and it's part of a cool chorus. Oh, speaking of the purple birthmark, this is exactly what I was talking about, right? Again, I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> This is the Um, buckle my um. Uh, uh, beautiful little what up, man? 
Ah, shit, it's beautiful. Ah, this, this fucking hell. 70s music. Da, da, da. This shit is fucking beautiful. Go teeth, my first brain. Get those since sixth grade. Muffins in my mind, not pocket. That's the case, and I've been paid. So. Trilla is another one of them records that um, I really did love right off the bat. Uh, when I first heard it, I was like, ooh, this shit's just like, it gives me that sort of desert cactus vibe. I don't know. I just, that's what I picture. <laughs> like almost like being in Las Vegas or some shit, driving through the desert. Like, I don't know. I just was kind of like Western, like that kind of vibe, you know? Um, and I liked it. I, I really loved this beat. I thought this beat was fire. And, I, and I'm shocked that they didn't do a video for this because I actually think that this could have been a single from Live Love ASAP easily. And I think it would have really... Because it was... You know, people didn't play it often. You didn't necessarily hear it out. But I remember, like, hearing it, like, at clubs here and there. Like, once in a while back then. You know, like, it was rare. But, uh, yeah, I love this beat. Chain, my gold friends, my card, yeah, you small change, you bitch made. I'm old school like dip stars and switch blades. Ah, again. A soft shell. I don't know who they are, respectfully. Uh, but anyways, great sample. This one I've heard again. You around this time, maybe like a year after, like kind of looking into the release of Long Live. I remember hearing this at like a club once or twice, and it was just like da, 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 da. like that shit. It just feels right at nighttime, and the weather is good. There's something about this record that just makes you feel like you're in a great place. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, this is beautiful. This is music for the villains, sophisticated, cheering ASAP in the house. Now we finna run the building, working up and chilling till I get a million to the ceiling. Now my niggas gunning for a billion. This guy spoke this shit, man. Like, this is, I mean the. That's another thing about Live Love ASAP, and it's so interesting to see in hindsight because it's like he spoke sort of that, you know, always striving prosper and rocky type of shit, and he ended up prospering. You know what I mean? And like, it's pretty wild when you think about it. Like, these are the beautiful things about art sometimes. Like, it's a dream. His dream actually did come true. Um, one thing that this sample video does not mention, which is a grave oversight in my opinion, is obviously the What's Up song. See me in the hood, gangsta saying what's up. Um, so I wonder what the sample for that is. Uh, I've I've kind of looked it up at one point and I forgot, but uh, obviously that that beat's phenomenal. That's a, another again, Clams genius. Um, let's see what else. I mean, oh, this is great. Kissing pink. Oh, this is beautiful. This is brilliant, man. <laughs> I love this joint. This is brilliant. And again, like, this... I'm a hip-hop fanatic. Again, this is what floored me about ASAP Rocky. Because, of course, unlike when I was listening to DMX for the first time and I witnessed DMX kind of come out in real time, quote-unquote, DMX was already bu you know, buzzing in New York. Again, I'm in Saudi Arabia, so I didn't see any of that. I just heard the songs as they were released. So that's number one. And number two... Yeah, I was listening to rap heavy. I started listening heavy in 97. But the point is, like, obviously, I didn't know shit about rap. In the grand scheme of things, I was just experiencing it. But by the time I'm getting into ASAP Rocky in 2011, I've been listening to rap since 97. So for someone to do some shit that actually has me going like, wait, what's going on right now? Is like, it's a whole different type of experience and a different type of pleasure, right? Because now you're going like, wow, like, someone knew has actually done their homework enough to impress me that's been listening decades into this shit. It's a whole nother level of anticipation, right? So... Never heard a song in my life. Obscure record as fuck. <laughs> 
aren't even where to get them. Again, this is what makes hip hop cool. Take stuff people don't know about and flip it. Look at that. No more faces, no, no dreams come <laughs> true. This is beautiful, man. And I wanna chop and screw you, girl. Moving like this turtle time. Feeling like, like the world is my mind. I be on my Bergenstein. I stay on my money grind. Then I'm going out of my mind. Flying through the purple sky. And I'm in a different world. And you kind of look like Jazz and Guy. <laughs> Best Frank Frog verse ever. Ever. And the first time I heard this, I thought it was garbage. I couldn't even get into it. I was like, this nigga ruined this fucking song completely. Thought it was total garbage. And if you look at, uh, I think even Fantano, you know, back in the day when I would even look at Fantano's videos. But Fantano, I think, even said the same thing. I thought it was garbage. But, you know, it's one of those things that really warmed up to me. And I still think this is the best Ferg verse, period. You know? Um, <laughs> I don't want, like, something... Well, purple on my mustache. Now it's time to screw you. <laughs> That's great. Because <laughs> facts, first of all. <laughs> and number two. And then he was like, I don't want to chop and screw you, girl. That shit's funny. That is funny. It's hip hop. You know, again, this is the guys. These guys love this shit, man. And I, I, it's smart. Like, it's just funny and smart. Anyway. You know... I was never crazy about this song. I still am. This song, it just never warmed up to me. And, uh, I know people love this song. Broken roller uh, I never liked this song. I'm gonna be honest. Put you down, bring it down, so take it down. It's alright. Welcome back. But, welcome back. My suit is tough. This is for my old head. It was a little too traditional for me. It was a little too traditional for me in a way. But again, what's interesting is this song, Houston Old Head to me was really popular. It was, you could almost argue that it was the most popular non-single on the t on the whole tape at that time. I, I remember people, because anytime I, I would tell people, yo, go listen to Live Love ASAP. Every now and then I would come back and it was like, the people I knew I put them on to be listening to Houston Old Head. And I'm like, this is not, this isn't the shit that, I, that, that makes this tape great. <laughs> but they loved it. Um, and probably Houston Old Head probably still has a ton of views. I remember it being like literally one of the most viewed songs at that time. But I, I just never was into it. I, I found the beat to be a little too, I don't know, sorry. It was a little too melodramatic. Not not melodramatic. It's not corny, but it's in that, it's in, you know, in that sort of word space. It was, it, it's, but it wasn't full-blown corny. Again, it's a decent song, but it just wasn't, um, it just wasn't my vibe. I will say this though, and I think the brilliance of Houston Hold Ed and including it in the tape is a great idea because it's the sunniest song on the album, right? The album, aside from Peso, but even Peso has a nighttime feel to it. Um, Houston Old Head sounds like some sort of like, oh, I woke up in the morning, -da -da -da, like, you know, like it is that kind of sun bright type of vibe. And again, it's always powerful when if you have an album that's dark, that has like mostly dark music, hip hop, I would argue at its best is dark usually because hip hop comes from a dark place, you know, <laughs> literally and figuratively. Um, but I think it's always nice when you, when it's not, again, not unrelentingly dark, even though obviously it's dark and hell is hot is uh, a great example of that. But again, look at it's dark and, and hell is hot. Look at the one song that is the lighter sounding song on there. It's what you know how it's going down, right? With the and the chick record, and that's like easily one of the best songs the MX ever recorded. You need that balance, is what I'm trying to say. Like, you know, it's always wise to if you're if you're going to have a somewhat dark nighttime sounding album, if you have that one song that it doesn't have to be full blown daytime, but if you have that mix and you throw that in there, there's a way it it, it stands out and makes your tape feel more real. So. I'll say that about uh, Houston Old Head. And I, and I think in that sense it was a nice addition to the tape, but I don't like the song. Yeah, again. You know, I really think I'm big meat, right? Or the, you know. Hey, look, man, what's, <laughs> well, what's an album without getting a statement from an officer, right? <laughs> uh, this was the one that really floored me, I remember at the time. Yeah. You know, um... You know, I looked at the crowd. You know, when I saw this video, I was like, that's where they got the ODB vocals from for again. I was I had no idea. I knew immediately when I heard Leaf that it's ODB. ODB has a certain voice, you can tell. 
But I was like, I don't know where the fuck they got this from. So they got this from some obscure MTV interview. Give me a fucking break. Like, these are, like, clams again. Brilliant. Like, just some fucking hip-hop ass shit. But I know that it's a thing I'm doing up here. And I know that damn, damn well. well. We are some partying motherfuckers. Good morning, honey. This is crazy. It's crazy. I will say to you last night. This shit's crazy. Uh, ain't no stay behind the scenes. Yeah. I'm probably mixing leaves. Chilling with my niggas, with my team. Come and take a sip with me. Sit in my beer. Take a sip with me. That shit's beautiful, man. Hey, that shit is So Billy don't play no game, straight up. Yeah. Just go out to all the rappers. rappers. <laughs> Just go out to my little dog, the little kids <laughs> running around in school. Y'all, they love, love you. you. This shit's hip-hop, Keep it man. Good. Keep it so good, wrong. kid. Because you know I love, love you. you. Crazy, man. Oh, One thing that I've always wanted to know from Leaf, because I loved Leaf when I first heard it. Leaf was actually, I was so stuck on bass. Again, I've said this before. I was so stuck on bass for months um and i was literally writing like screenplays to bass like i'd have bass in the background i was like it just it just inspired furious thought in me but um the second clams casino beat that i had loved that i was just like oh i'm starting to understand because again clam shit was really weird it was difficult for me to get into initially again i say difficult in the sense that of course it was just a it was like a mental switch in a sense um was leaf this was the second one that I really liked. And I loved Leaf because I liked that da, 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 in the background. And I just remember thinking, what the fuck? Like, like it sounded like some Mongolian throat singing shit. Shit that I've heard. And like, I like a lot of different kinds of music. So um, it was like almost like this world music thing. And I was like, where the fuck? Like, who's throwing that into their beats and stuff? So I thought that was brilliant. Um, and again, clams to me the soul of this tape because... If you take the Clams records out, I think Live Love ASAP is something else entirely. You know, it's still great. You could uh, you could even say it was, well, uh, I don't know if I'd call it classic though. You know, but again, all the other songs are phenomenal. They're fun. But I think my point is Clams edition almost single-handedly takes what is kind of up here. Hey, we hanging out, fashion girls whatever and then makes it almost seem like a transcendent experience like you're hanging out with the flyest niggas ever <laughs> right not just like we really fly but now you're hanging out with people who are transcendentally fly <laughs> who are fly like on some fountain shit like they are fly through generations type fly like that's a whole another type of fly and that's what i mean like the clams thing because it just hits a certain depth with those beats that you're just like oh my fucking god this dude is transcendent um and that was the energy that rocky was going with that honestly blew my blew me away i remember like he when he was rocking that silence hat and shit like that i was like trying to find one of them shits and this is a guy i don't care about hip-hop fashion like that i'm not the most hip-hop fashion i was never really the most fashion dude ever anyway but you have to understand i'm older than the audience that asap rocky is necessarily well quote unquote speaking to or at least you know i'm older than rocky and I was looking at it like, oh my god, I want to dress like this nigga. <laughs> like then that's when I was like, oh shit is real. Like I'm a fan. Like you know what I mean? Like because there wasn't really anyone before that in a sense. The last time I wanted to look like a rapper, I would say, was maybe well DMX for sure. Like I remember I had a rough ride as chain and all that. Um, so I, you know, obviously as a teenager, I wanted to look like DMX in that, in that fashion. And then whoever was out, you know, um, but even when Jay was, was doing this thing, like I remember when he had the button ups and I wasn't trying to look like Jay, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, it's just different, different styles and different tastes. But my point is that when a rapper is, hits you so much that you're even to the point where you're like, yo, I want to look like this nigga, like I, or like he's wearing some cool shit that I actually, I would actually buy. I would pay, put money down to like buy that shit. That's when I was like, oh, this guy's on some other shit. Those black scale hats were hard as fuck to me. Straight up. Straight up. Now we get to the part, to me, which is the real, this shit, fucking brilliant. This song is super obscure. And I imagine this is like a trip hop record. So this is also what made Clam so interesting to me is that, you know, 
trip hop wasn't really a thing anymore. Um, and and trip hop is always kind of, I mean, it was more popular, I would imagine, in the UK really than it was in probably stateside because I never really heard much of it. You know, like it was one of those things. Like when I moved back to North America and Canada in the early two thousands. I wasn't. It's not like you were hearing trip hop on the radio and people were talking about it. Like it just wasn't a thing. Um, it, that was some shit that I had literally found on the internet. Like I started digging into Massive Attack and Zero Seven and shit like that. So my point is that this, and I was like even really digging into some trip hop stuff in the mid two thousands before all this. And I remember thinking to myself, oh, I really like the vibe of this. Like if you listen to, um. And I and I and I almost want to say that Clams was listening to this shit because if you listen to songs like this, like you can listen to this on your own. You see that muddy it has this muddy feel to it, and I'm. Right? This is classic in a way, right? This is old. Anyway, so I'm, you know, so I'm familiar with some of these things, but again, I was thinking to myself, I was like, oh, this is kind of cool, like, you know, and this is like from the mid '90s, I want to say. Uh, again, not it's, this dust. It, at this point, it's almost like relegated to the dustbin. You know what I'm saying? And for climbs to bring that back in a way but in his own sense is like some kind of shit anyway let's get back to my appreciation <laughs> yeah shits man so anyways even with all my digging I never came across these people I don't know who it's Conjure 1R come on this is this is god level shit I'm sorry this is god level this is literally what this beat this beat is so deep it literally sounds like it sounds like heaven in a sense like you're like literally rising to the clouds but in a weird but almost in the same time it's it's sad as hell but it's also uplifting. As, again, when you start making shit that has all those layers, you're approaching genius. Straight up. This shit fucking flip me the fuck out. I smoke the way my brain. I think they're going down. Cocaine before my gums. I think they're going down. I'm having stomach pain. Now I'm throwing up. Cause I'm on microphone feet. Give me the bass in my brain. How do you find that? I smoke find that. <laughs> Shout out to Clams, but how do you even find that shit? How do you find sleep some random remix of some random trip hop record i don't i would say maybe a thousand people in the world know or less and know enough listen to the shit and go i'm gonna reverse this but i'm gonna reverse this part of it and then i'm gonna use it for a beat like how do you even think about that shit that's the shit to me that's like yeah this is genius this is genius. I'm sorry, your your favorite rappers are not doing this. They none of them were doing this, and they, none of them can do this. They don't have the intellect and the ear and all that to do this shit. Again, when you guys, you know, when I keep stressing that Rocky Live Love ASAP is the hardest shit the new generation has come with. Period. It's not arbitrary. I'm not just saying this shit because I like Rocky's face or something. It's it's literally like as a music listener. Yeah, I have a certain bias. I do like theatrical things. I like sort of like this melodic. Um, melancholic stuff I think to a certain extent but again like it's not arbitrary right like hip hop in general is like that right like more or less I mean of course hip hop has many shades as you know so I can understand someone listening to Live Love ASAP and they might really like it or they might not you know they might be like oh that was cool and they might prefer something else I totally understand that but to like not see how brilliant this is is like what like are we listening to the same genre and shit this is fucking brilliant no one's doing this 
way my brain I think I'm going down Cocaine okay, on my lungs I think I'm going down This to me, again, demons Um I, I could do a whole video on demons I think it's the realest record The new generation has dropped Frankly Um Again, not again emotionally, you know. Demons post around me. I can't. Even, I hope they leave them all alone. Or whatever he was saying. I, I, you know, it's been a while since I'm listening to, to demons, but um, that chorus is deep, and just the feel of it. It's like again, some crazy, crazy shit, man. I'm having stomach pains, and I'm throwing up. Cause I'm the microphone fiend. Give me the bass. Give me the. Yeah, this is all beautiful. About this too is that oh is this from 2002 yeah by 2002 trip pop was not really it was it was definitely not a thing you know um again i don't know what era if this was from europe or something like that but out here like people were not listening to this shit so this is some obscure as fuck song to me again i could be wrong but this seems like one of them really really obscure songs so again this is what made this so dope because this is the end like ASAP Rocky's Live Love ASAP is is the internet. It's the internet sampling, right? I mean, Lil B and them were obviously doing this, but ASAP Rocky took this to a whole another level, him and Yams and all that, right? It was the first time I saw someone take all the shit that's available on the internet and actually compile it into something really cool. It's kind of like that DJ Shadow introducing shit, um, or again, of course, all the, like, when Primo samples some obscure... Thief of Baghdad shit to make uh, <laughs> to make represent the you know the Prince of Persia of, of Queensbridge type feel right like yeah like that's ill and obviously requires immense crazy digging but that's all physical stuff right they're they're literally finding stuff that's already on vinyl that is somewhat I don't want to say local but in a sense local right whereas. Live Love ASAP to me was just cats reaching out to shit that, like, they couldn't have remotely been close to, right? Like, they're not remotely close to Memphis, really. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, in a sense, right? And, like, or just interviews from past. Like, no one has interviews of ODB on vinyl. Do you know what I mean? Like, that kind of shit where it's, like, almost like you're taking speeches and things and, and random shit that you're just like, oh, that's kind of interesting. I'll add that to the song. And that was mind-blowing to me. And I think that we'll never see that. And as much as, I, I, as I'm making a tribute to Live Love ASAP, I know that we probably won't see this again. Um, from Maybe from ASAP Rocky. Maybe we'll see it from a new person. I don't know. But that furious drawing of all these things, unfortunately, I think we won't see it. And again, because of sampling laws and costs and things like that, it's really hard to pull this stuff off. <laughs> about demons of course demons but uh the song ended up becoming demons is it also has again that the girl in the background it's again it's 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 dark it's heavenly but it's also there is that darker side to it. it's almost kind of like a siren from those of old fairy tales if you remember kind of like a like a siren that's calling you to your destruction like this is this some really wild shit and by the way something to consider i forget the guy's name but there was a dude that actually rhymed on the demon's beat. Oh my god. I just, I wish I thought about this earlier. I think his name was like G-Shock or some shit? Who was the guy that rapped on this originally? G-Shock? Was it G-Shock? Oh, I have to look at this. Because there was a, and again, if, you, if you're not sure what Rocky brings to the table... You should hear other people rap on this shit. <laughs> then you'll be like, oh, ASAP Rocky's brilliant. brilliant. Um, let me see here. No, it's not this. It's not this for sure. Oh, Jesus. Um, the guy... I'll come back to this. I'll, I'll probably put it in the comments. Because I remember G-Side. Maybe it was G-Side. G-Side? Nah. Fuck. Was it G-Side? Clams Casino? Let me see. 
I remember it was some random guy. G side. Maybe it was G side. Did he throw? Did he put the shit down? Hey, ma. Right. I, it is G side. Hey, man. Good memory. This is me. Yep, and that's what makes Demons way better. Heavier drums and Rocky sounds better than this random. <laughs> I'm a tough critic. But yes, this dude had the Demons beat before Rocky. I'm pretty sure it was either before Rocky or around the same time. Because you have to remember, Clams was he was just a guy on the internet who was probably begging people to rap on the shit. And people were like, ah. Again, not everyone can you know recognize Genius when they see it. Like, uh, this is what it is. So, yeah. Listen to pictures by G Side and you'll see like, yeah, Rocky really took this shit somewhere else. So we've gone through this. Shit hit kids, women. Oh, that's your girl, huh? Well I just hit it. It's ASAP, nigga, live with it. Um, I have to play this because you know what? Fuck it. Let's just do it. Daily motion. Uh I find what um no no. ASAP. Because they took this video down. This I fucking hate that. I, I like. I honestly hate that shit. I like whoever put that Don Jai. That's stupid shit. Why would you start every? Nah, that's just fucking dumb. Anyway, um, <laughs> and the year it was, I was. I knew it was coming up, and I was trying to, you know, lower the volume in time. So. That voice is so beautiful, man. Look at this shit, man. This is the shit I think about when I hear this. Let's go, look. Yams yeah, rocking that. Like, this is this is the shit that made ASAP Rocky just amazing to me. You know what I mean? And Yams in them. Because it was real street, but... And it was sad, but it was also like... Again, they were also sitting there like, We're so sad. <laughs> or emo. Getting emo with it. It was living life. You know what I'm saying? They're trying to have fun. They're trying to, you know, get about life the best way they can and isn't that how it is for everybody or almost everybody you know what i'm saying and again that hip-hop again that dancing i always i always come back to that because to me when hip-hop stops dancing that's when hip-hop sucks you know and i'm not saying you got to break out into a full-blown dance all the fucking time it's not like that but jesus i should be able to at least rock to your shit like really i'm really be feeling it if i'm just standing there going like or just doing this goofy little head nod that I find sometimes with these, uh, you know, Griselda school shooter type beats where it's like there's almost no rhythm. There's nothing that really, you know, that funk that gets me like into it. It's It sucks. It's like unlistenable to me. Big beat, right? Get money addict. I'm a get money taddict. Money in the addicts. Money in the stashes. Money in the cashes. Stuff in the mattress. Stay full of guns. More money. And up in dash. And I think even, yeah, I love Rihanna. That's that's wild. <laughs> and now, you know, that's wild. I mean, again, for someone who saw it or, or you know, was witnessing it, shit, I wish I was in living in New York at this time, man. That's one thing I'm like, ah, I would have loved to have been living stateside at this time because I wasn't living in New York at all at this time, but I was visiting. Um, I want to say that I was in New York early, early 2012. I think, um, visiting, and I was in the East Coast, and I remember talking to a girl from Harlem, she was like, we don't, we don't fuck with Rocky, and I was like, are you kidding me, like, I'm in Toronto, losing, losing my fucking mind over ASAP Rocky, actually, you know what, um, I'm gonna take that back, I wasn't in New York when I was talking to her, I was in D.C., because she was going to Howard, that's what it was, I was in, How I was like on the Howard campus or sometime, like sometime in like 2012 or some shit. Um, so this is like a few months after Live Love ASAP, and I was like, you know, meeting this girl, and she's like, oh, I'm from Harlem. I'm like, oh, you from Harlem? Like, ASAP Rocky? And she was like, that nigga weird, and I don't listen. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> so anyways, I would have loved to be in the city to experience this kind of shit, because this, to me, this is the pinnacle, man. This is obviously the best shit Rocky came with, um, and this is the best shit that anyone has come with. I'll be honest with you. Now, um... I made this video because obviously I'm excited to see ASAP Rocky come out again with new material. Um, very briefly, I think what I'll say is there's a few things. There's a few things like, look, obviously I would love for ASAP Rocky to kind of 
go back to this live love ASAP formula. Not necessarily subject matter. Or he doesn't have to necessarily like I don't like ASAP Rocky, he doesn't have to go back to the projects. I'm, I'm not that's you know, again, when people say, yo, you want him to go back to nah nah nah. When we like certain things, we like the formula. We like the we like the aesthetic and the and the personality and the feeling that that one project brought. So of course we want to see that formula continue because it's a it's an amazing winning formula. So yes, I would love to see Rocky work with more uh, Clams Casino. Of course, I would love to see Clams go back to the sound, and I'm sure that he kind of abandoned this style because it was probably not financially lucrative to him because of sample win. I'm sure this is what that was the reason again. On one of the unfortunate things about rap, but understandable. Um, so, yeah, I would love to see them just have that, get back in the studio, just make something just like some otherworldly, deep life shit. Because when you hear that clam stuff, it's, it really is like the beat of life almost. You know, particularly the beat of like life over generations, I want to say. And that's what makes that shit really powerful. Most people can't put that in. What's the audio equivalent of that? How do you do that in a rap record? Clams is kind of like the one guy that hear that. Um, so I would love to obviously hear Clams, without a doubt. Obviously, I would love to hear Beautiful Lou. Um, if, because Beautiful Lou has been doing some stuff. Shout out to Beautiful Lou. Um, Beautiful Lou has some beats that he's made somewhat recently. Um, and probably still making them that are fire. So I would love to hear the original team in a lot of ways. In a lot of ways, and and the truth is, anyone who has a good beat, anyone who has a dope beat that has invokes an emotion, that invokes an atmosphere, right, a, a visual, um, a feeling, and an emotional atmosphere that's addictive and compelling. Yeah, I mean, and that could be anybody, right? Anyone can come with that shit. So I do want to hear that. As far as like the newer stuff, I do think that Rocky fell into a trap, in my opinion, of doing more of the, like when he did like Long Live ASAP. Was there? A, I'm trying to remember if this was a single. Yeah, like I remember hearing this and I was like, eh. as long as I make history, now my son you This was uh, this was air to me. But my point is that, you know, Rocky at his finest, in my opinion, this, the Rocky that we remember him for, and clearly this was obvious back then, and we've seen this with the I'm God, uh, demons mashup is the clam shit. That's the shit that like everyone who genuinely likes Rocky's music we all look for and we all lust for so it would be nice for him to go back to that because that was a pivotal that was an evolution of rap that cloud rap shit really it really was um obviously i wouldn't mind hearing him on some pierre shit like i wish he would finish up this damn record like <laughs> you know <laughs> i love this beat like yo yo pierre you know Finish, fin he, he, he can finish the song. I like, I don't know how they think. Maybe he's like, oh, it's leaked, so I can't touch it anymore. But no, you, you can finish the song up, okay? Respit it because obviously he sounds like he has a cold. He doesn't even bring the energy required. But I would love to hear like a real version of this song because I actually think that this beat is fucking hell. Um, I even added my little. I'm true. <laughs> I love this shit. This beat's gone. So this is interesting because obviously this is more of a Cardi type of sound, right? That bouncy video gamey thing. Um, it's not quite Rocky sound, but it comes from Rocky in a sense, right? Or that uh, cloud rappy thing. So again, like if you're going to do something new, like if it's in the lineage of things that you kind of birth of the game that's great so i would love to see asap rocky on some more pierre stuff if he could do it um yeah but other than that i've seen i might as well look at a don't be dumb producer list um, i didn't even look at this too too heavy um confirmed producers was this from asap rocky uh well this is 11 months ago so mm, i take this with a grain of salt but i I love, obviously, I'm a huge Neptunes fan, but Pharrell, uh, I don't, I don't think Pharrell and ASAP Rocky, you know, like, again, I love Pharrell, but, nah, 
Uh, obviously not Tyler the Creator. I've never heard a great Tyler the Creator beat, so I don't know what that's about. Metro, mm, <sighs> Metro has not been it for me for a long time. So definitely don't want to hear Metro, unfortunately. And I, but look again, if they have a great beat, a great beat, I want to hear it. It's not you know. I'm just saying in terms of I'm thinking about ASAP Rocky sound because again, why deviate? Like from what makes you great right and what makes you unique like anyone can get a pharrell beat not anyone but you get my point anyone can get an alchemist beat but who can get a clams beat who, who can make clams a thing that's what you want right um this is all old so i don't know how much i can trust this list but uh mad lib would be kind of interesting mad lib is yeah, again, doesn't strike me as, you know, Mad Lib to me obviously made his bones on MF Doom's Mad Villainy. You need somebody that has real rhymes, I think, to be able to rock a Mad Lib beat, you know? Because the beats kind of, it's weird, but it's, and it's blunted, but it's also one of the, like, Mad Lib at his best. It's like one of those beats where you really need to be able to flex your, your personality and sly wit and all that shit. And that's why I don't know how that would sound with ASAP. Because ASAP hasn't really shown himself to be like the most lyrical guy. Not that he has to be. But, um, you know, he's best. He, you know, he's a he's a beat guy. I and mean, he says this in his interviews. He's a, he's a beat dude, really. You know, at his core, right? Him and Yams, I'm sure. Like, that's what, he's great at channeling emotion according to the beat. You know, as you should. Anyways, that's basic as, as rapping. But... You know, he's not really the guy that has, like, a certain viewpoint where you're like, oh, shit, I want to hear this. And you need that, I think, to rock Mad Lib. Alchemist, nope. Um, Hit Kid, uh, he did the Go Beat, which was cool. But again, that's kind of like a retro, you know, it's kind of like a retro 3-6 Mafia. You know, what I loved about what Rocky was doing is it was an updated 3-6 Mafia, not a retro, right? Like, you hear Brand New Guy... You hear pretty flacco. That's like Memphis shit, but now new, right? So going backwards is like again. I'm not a fan of that. Um, Mike Dean, no. Um, Swiss House Mafia, Swedish House Mafia, no. I don't know who Dean Blunt is. Kelvin Crash did Sandman, which was I. <laughs> uh, you already know how I feel about Hip Boy. <laughs> you can search in my channel for. Her. My hit boy uh, comments. I will say that Goldie was the uh, Goldie to me is the best hit boy beat I've ever heard it's to this day. And I do think that Goldie is a good ASAP Rocky record. But again, it's not his best. It's not one of his best either. In fact, when Goldie came out, um, speaking of <laughs> clams and all this stuff and producers, uh, I was at the time my ex girlfriend, uh, Dominican girl, was and she didn't really speak that much English. But anyway, she loved palace loved palace like this is a girl who doesn't you know straight from Dominican Republic like didn't speak a ton of English um but like when I played I lived love ASAP around that time and she just loved palace like she would like I'd catch her rapping along to it and right like the give me the title give me the cash she loved that shit and the beat and everything so anyways the point is this I remember when Goldie came out and uh so I was like, yo, ASAP's got a new song. She's like, oh, show it to me. And she, I showed her Goldie, and she was like, nah. <laughs> She's like, he's saying it. He's falling off already. And I was like, what? No, don't say that shit. <laughs> sure enough. Um, so, yeah. And then Boy Wonder, uh, maybe, you know, Scarborough uh, representing. So you never know, maybe. But, uh, yeah. Listen, whatever Rocky drops, uh, you know, obviously I'll listen to it, and I will give you my opinion and my two cents on it. I hope it's great. Uh, like I said, I'm a Rocky fan. I'll probably be a Rocky fan for life, all things considered, because Live Love ASAP is that strong, and it certainly made a big impression on me. Um, so I, I, I would love for Rocky to really drop another type. You know, again, you, you need... Because if Rocky was to drop another Live Love ASAP quality-esque album, it doesn't... Again, I don't think you can ever match Live Love ASAP, if we're being realistic. Uh, not that not that he can't, but again, you know, he's been in this rap shit for a long time. He's, he's, it, the odds of him going back to that are slim. But what I am saying is that you do need, to, how you build a musical legacy is when you drop 
great new shit. Shit that like is a testament to your great old shit, but is also new at the same time. And then you got a new wave of fans that come in. Because frankly, the people that love ASAP Rocky are my age and below. But if he dropped like a crazy Clamps Casino record tomorrow, there's a 12 year old that's going to listen to that and be like, oh my God, it's the best shit I've ever heard in my life. And now he's got a new fan. And that fan is going to go back and listen to old shit and go, oh my God. And, and that fan will grow. And I mean, this is literally how the Nas's and the Jay Z's of the world became famous, right? Over time. It wasn't initial, it wasn't immediate, right? There were bigger rappers than Nas and Jay at that time, f flat out. Um, Bright Kersher, I don't know what the hell was. Oh, Jesus, I, I always forget. He's some random guy, some random white dude. I mean, I say random, but he's, he's, he's someone, right? He's done something on Drink Champs, and I can't remember his name. Um, Jesus. He was, some, he was some white guy, and he was talking about how he got into rap um, and that he loved Biggie, and he, like he was a white frat boy, and all of them loved Biggie. He's like, yeah, I mean, Biggie is pretty simple to get into. I mean, Biggie is a genius, but he told that line. He was a little more sort of pop commercial, and the guy was flat out like, we didn't discover Nas until much later. And I think even by the way he was talking about Nas, it was like he didn't discover Nas till like 2003 or some shit, which makes sense, right? Again, like the great artists tend to go under the radar from the mainstream for but it's not for very long normally and if you continue to drop quality songs here and there you're getting new people in every time who love it and those fans don't the old fans don't disappear and then you've got new fans and you're just adding it and then eventually you have this tidal wave and you take over that's what it is so i've talked long enough i appreciate you taking the time to listen to me as always and um love y'all peace